previous videos, we mentioned about the architectural drawing. We know that it is produced by the architect, giving an illustration on how the building should look like when the building is fully constructed. It provides the basis for the engineers to design for the structural part in accomplishing their tasks to produce the structural drawing. It also serves as a reference to the contractor that the contractor will need to construct in accordance to what is illustrated in the architectural drawing so that an identical structure is produced in the reality. This is a part of the planning of the project. There are so many things need to be considered where we will need to imagine the structures in 3D how would it look like so that we can realize it in the realities. This is a professional skills owned by the architect. And then the next process on the structural design, it will be another profession, which is the engineers. Later, the relevant documents, namely the architectural drawing and the structural drawing, will pass to the quantity surveyor which is another profession. That means there will be collaborations and communications among three professions. Each of them have their own considerations, expertise, and the technical aspects. And then all this later will pass to the contractor to realize the building. There is another field of expertise there. All this, every single part of it, are not an easy task, especially when you talk about something which is in the imaginations. How do you communicate the information precisely? It is basically through the architectural drawing. We also mentioned a list of the information which is provided in the architectural drawing, mostly related to the view of the structure. How does the structure look like? what kind of services in the structure, involvement of different parties, especially the local authorities, whether it is approved, as well as general notes to help the parties involved to interpret the architectural drawing. In these videos, we're going to zoom in our discussions on the general notes, which are commonly appear in the architectural drawing. These are some of the examples. Of course, there are more. It is dependent on the architectures. Especially, they would like to sanitize something. Maybe let us look into every single one of them, trying to interpret their meanings. First, all the dimensions in this drawing should be checked on site before the work commence. That means the architect will require you to check carefully before you actually start the construction work on site. In the case that any error appear, you will need to quickly refer to the architect and seek for the clarifications. This is a good preventive measures, which in case that there are any errors, it has already been rectified before the commencement of the work. You know that when you notice the mistakes, when you are halfway of the constructions, the amendment will be rather challenging and normally is going to incur some costs which may also result in changes in terms of the design along the pipeline that may bring impacts to the engineers as well as the quantity surveyors. Therefore, it is stated clearly, everyone should check the dimension first and ensure there are no errors before the site work started. Next, figures dimension should be taken in preference to scale dimensions. It means that there will be dimensions written in the architectural drawing, which is the figure dimensions. And we know that the architectural drawing are normally produced in accordance to scale. Sometimes due to several amendments, the dimensions has been changed without converting into proper scale. This will lead to a situation 
contradictions between the figures shown in the architecture drawing but when you measure it with the rulers you realize that there are some variations in the case there are contradictions the ultimate reference it will be the figures dimensions as compared to those which you convert and measure by using rulers next all discrepancies are asked to be reported for clarifications before work commence. The meaning of discrepancies is that contradictions or illogical information given in the architectural drawing, which you suspect there are some errors, normally you will need to seek clarifications from the architect before the work starts. You cannot simply assume certain things which can lead to the implications of the hacking of the cost of constructions or the delay of the projects. That means the architect would like you to check the drawing carefully before you actually start constructing the building. These are the three general notes given to all the parties using the architectural drawings. Don't just simply assume because you know that the drawing will pass over from parties to parties if different person assume it differently this will bring problems to the constructions of the building next positions of the septic tank and manhole refers to the site plan that means the architectural drawing is actually providing you an overview in terms of the existence of the septic tank as well as the manhole Normally, these are not given with the proper dimensions and their positions are not actually given dimensions with respect to the building produced in the architectural drawings. You cannot decide the positions by measuring the locations of the separate tank in respect to the building, assuming that will be the right positions as there will be other considerations on site. For example, due to the ground conditions, the level, any obstacles, and you know that the piping between the septic tank, the main holes, are actually on basis of the gravity flow. All these need to be properly adjusted on site. Therefore, the architectural drawing leaves this flexible to the contractor doing the work on site. However, it do give you information that how many main holes, how many septic tank, where are the intended locations of the septic tank as well as the main hole, how does the floor of the piping and etc. As the architect also cover the services part. Next, all perimeter drain invert level refers to the site plan. All main hole invert level refers to the site plan. Directions of discharge for effluent pipe refers to the site plan. All these have a similar problem. It will be very much dependent on the site conditions, which need to be properly adjusted on site. The architectural drawing will indicate the existence, how the system works to ensure the functionality of the system, and then the rest it will be leave it to the site personnel to make it effective and work. Next, all water closet should be in dual flush system. This is a part of the requirement set by the architect regarding the water closet. The meaning of dual flush system is that the user can choose to flush the WC full tank or half tank. It is meant for the daily use of the occupant of the building. All water closet or bath, slab and walls to apply one layer of damp proof course all round. This one is meant for waterproofing purposes. There should be a layer of damp proof membrane to prevent the leakage of the water through the walls and through the slabs that will affect the durability of the structures due to the corrosion issue of sort of reinforcement in the structural members as well as to prevent the aesthetic issues such as the watermark on the ceilings. 
Next, ground floor RC slab to engineer's details with one layer of damp proof membrane beneath. When you see this statement, that means most likely the RC slab in the ground floor is going to be suspended slab and most likely the slab is going to be on direct contact to the soil. You know that this will lead to an issue of the capillary actions of the groundwater which will bring in the moisture passing through the slab into the building. It will cause you some other problem such as efflorences. Therefore, the architect will require engineers to design for the slab, to cater for the structural part, to ensure the stability of the slab, and it also specified that there should be a layer of damp-proof membrane to prevent the moistures going up into the building through the ground floor RC slab. Next, Wheelbing should be provided on site prior to issuance of the occupation permit. Wheelbing is meant for throwing rubbish. That will be a part of the requirement by the local council. And this needs to be provided before the occupational permit is given by the local authorities. You know that without this occupation permit, Nobody is allowed to use the building. That means technically, the occupants in the building without the occupation permit will be illegal. This is in fact a regulation by the local authority as a mechanism to protect the buyer of the building. They will need to check and ensure that the building is fit to use before they issue the occupation permit so that the buyer of the building can use the building. If something is not properly done, the occupation permit will be on hold until the developer or the contractor rectify the problem, then the occupation permit will be issued. And without the occupation permit, the payments of the buyers to the developer or the contractor will be affected they will be very eager to obtain that. This is something good to protect the right of the buyers of the buildings. And then within the architectural drawing, you will see some notes stated in this manner to manufacture details or to engineer details. Normally this is refers to certain part of the building when it is written to manufacture details, that means in that element of the building, it will be designed and provided by the manufacturers. This is normally related to the roof structures, the escalators, the lifts, and etc. And when it is written to engineer details, that means it is the responsibility of the engineer to design that specific element and it is normally related to the structural element. 